I think the three great benefits we saw, and which I envisaged from day one, was one, the opportunity for our promising athletes to compete at home against world-class opposition. Two, the opportunity for New Zealanders to see world-class competition. And I mean, the number of gold medalists that are here and competing is fantastic. And with that, raise the profile of winter sport. The third benefit is I saw that if we could make a profit, we could then pour it back. We created a charitable trust, so all the money, any profits would go to helping young athletes. We are a charitable trust. Our purposes are solely around delivering to the community and to the sports and to New Zealand. So our own object, objectives are to make sure we deliver more than just an event. And what an event provides is a catalyst in which a whole lot of different outcomes can be leveraged. So for example, in the sport environment, you might want to be leveraging um, our future athletes, or you may be wanting to develop our officials or our coaches or provide opportunities for international competition. From a community perspective, it might be all around the volunteers or the developing of infrastructure. You know, there's so many different elements that an event can deliver. So with the Leverage and Legacy, it's actually our partners who are the key drivers in terms of that. So the event itself delivers a number of returns for the community for the sport, around economic development, around international profile, etc. But our partners want to see other opportunities to achieve their outcomes. So Spark, as an example, is interested in talent identification and into growing our talent for, especially for 2018. So we're looking a long way out. So how can the event deliver in that area? Well, with the talent camp, the whole aim was to try and identify people who might well be our stars of 2018. So we worked really closely, obviously, with Spark, who are the drivers of that program, but then also with the Winter High Performance Program and with Snow Sports New Zealand. And they then pulled together the program that looked at young athletes or promising athletes from around the country in the 13 to 18 age group. Uh, from the alpine ski racing component, from the snowboard, free ski and also the adaptive side. So there were a number of different camps with just small numbers of people coming. But it gave them an opportunity to witness the games, meet the stars and also learn a little bit about what it's like and what you have to do to be an elite athlete. Uh, the camp was set up as an initiative through Spark and Winter Games um, and Snow Sports New Zealand. A bit of a talent search. Uh, hoping to draw in some more talent from skiing and snowboarding, but also um, hopefully from other sports, trying to attract some young, talented athletes and, and get them on snow and get them performing. Created a website, uh, everyone came on and created a profile, put themselves on there and, and uh, told us why they think they should come along. We've got some really good ones, we got um, around 60 applicants and um, chose the camps from there. Hey, I'm Carlos, I live in Christchurch. Um, I love competing in slope style and my favourite trick would be a uh, backflip. I applied on this website by uh, creating a blog and answering a lot of questions to um, determine whether I'm the type of person that they wanted, me, uh, that they wanted on the camp. I chose to, um, to enter in the camp because it sounded like a really good idea and I think that um, that I would be one of the people later on in life to compete in the Winter Games. I guess a lot of it is having fun because that's how I improve the most and just have fun with friends and keep pushing each other and I guess later on in life it will get a bit more serious um, and that's okay for me because um, hopefully later on I'm going to be a professional snowboarder. The purpose of tying in with the Winter Games is to give the um, young talent a bit of, bit of a window into elite sport into what it takes for these guys uh, to compete at that level and, and to keep progressing through. Um, quite often we find with, with the younger athletes that they kind of maybe have a misconception on how much hard work goes in with the top guys and so bringing them up here gives them a, a real insight into how much work and preparation on and off snow actually goes into creating athletes at this level. I reckon one of the best ways of learning is watching watching all these guys ride and Winter Games is obviously a huge part of New Zealand snowboarding. 
So it's it's a really good opportunity for me to come down and watch, especially as uh, seeing as from my, I'm from Christchurch and I wouldn't usually have this opportunity. So that's another big thing that this camp's given me. Spark is also interested in growing the event industry and growing the quality of our event organisers. So the opportunity to have an observers tour where event organisers can come to the event, observe it and event industry in an action and learn from that. Well I really believe that for the industry to grow we really need to share our knowledge and at both our successes and our, not so much our failures but the areas that we've learnt from and so to bring people into an actual environment where they can see an event in action, um, talk to the various members of my staff, talk to the athletes, talk to the international officials and then see what's happening um, can help not only them but then there's a sharing of knowledge between the event organisers and, and with us that I believe is hugely beneficial for the future of the sport and for events. Yeah, it's good to see uh, an event in operation and to see how uh, an event uh, manager or runner operator like uh, Arthur Clapp works in the uh, in games environment, if you like, and uh, totally relaxed, and uh, obviously you know have everything well under control. It affirmed a lot, I think, about the increasing professionalism of the events industry in New Zealand and how it, it's a business and it's there to make money and to do that, and also to give people exceptional experiences. And to do that, you do need to take those business principles to it and to record what works so that other people can benefit by that. And I think that's one of the huge things that Arthur's done, is there is an atmosphere of sharing good practice in order to make the events go faster or the boat go faster. I think it's been uh, really interesting to, to get out of Christchurch for a day and kind of meet some uh, fellow professionals and um, yeah, just generally chewing the fat. It's been really interesting. I thought Arthur's um, speech last night was quite inspirational and actually um, rekindled my enthusiasm for events again, which you know, it's uh, possibly been a long year in Christchurch, so um, yeah. Well, one of the issues for our smaller sports in New Zealand is that we have a very small pool of volunteers, and sometimes you get two or three that drive all the volunteer involvement in the sport, and then they move on, and suddenly there's a big vacuum. So, what we're really keen to do is building on a, a program that we saw in Canada and it's a program in which they pull together some key leaders within the volunteer program and, and school them up, give them some special treatment and they then become the leaders of the other volunteers. So it, it helps ensure that there's a longevity not just for the Winter Games but for all winter sports. So in this instance we worked uh, largely with the Alpine program and identified seven to eight uh, key volunteers that we've now trained up so they can then lead their teams up on the hill and they do that for the national events, they do it for the secondary schools events and so they become a resource for the whole community throughout the season. I feel that key elements of the volunteer team leader program that we've put together are making sure that the people that you identify have a strong passion or desire to do it. The, the next thing is to put them underneath the tutelage of people that you know, know how to run the events and know how to train them properly. Winter Games approached us as volunteer team leaders and asked us if we could put in a few days ahead of time to work with the race crew here to make sure that we're all on the same page. So I basically shadowed them essentially and um, learnt the ropes, learnt, you know, um, interacted with the start marshal and, and helped set the course up, take it down, carry gates and try and not drop them. Um, and I was with Brad as well and uh, helped out with um, the slipping of the course. Um, and that was a great experience and made me feel a lot more confident coming into the Winter Games that I sort of knew, more, knew what I was doing a bit more. I feel that if we can build a program, give them constant rewards, they, they can actually be called on, if you do, do build a good concept together, you can actually call on these same people, even in other, into other sports as well, as part of a core group who can work together.
Well, I think um, on, in a wider context, the snow sports industry is hugely important for New Zealand. You know, in 2010, the reason that the tourist numbers nationally stayed up was because of the snow sports industry. It was the one growth area um, throughout the country. And so we really need to look at that wider context of the snow sports industry as a tourism driver. In terms of the sports itself, it's surprising the, the international influence that New Zealand has had over the last four years in that area. And the reason that we have the free ski half pipe and, and slope style and the snowboard slope style in the Olympics in 2014 is because of what we have done in the last two years. We were extremely influential in that. And one of the key reasons why we pushed in that area was of course because it suits our athletes. Um, we have got stars in, in both snowboard and, and in free ski in those disciplines and increases our chances of, of getting medals in the next Olympics. All our resources are available for, for people to look at and to learn from so they can go to our website most of the many of the documents that we produce are available there for people to look at and personally I'm always available to answer questions forward um, particular documents you know, they might be organizational structures there might be templates on uh, processes there may be information on, on for example we have a now a, a volunteer online recruitment system established um, which we will refine over the next few months uh, from what we've learnt with these games, but that's available for people to share.